Live on digital television, the show 2016. Celebrating the best girls basketball players in Colorado. The show, a presentation of BioCat Sports Network. Producers of showcase events and academic elite camps for student athletes. Basketball, volleyball, soccer, football, and baseball. BioCats.com. And by Badger Sport, your go-to manufacturer of high-performance sports apparel, jerseys, staff activewear, team uniforms. Visit BadgerSport.com. Now, courtside in Lakewood, Colorado, Marty Cesario on Stream It Sports. In 2001, a marketing executive from the local professional basketball franchise had an idea to create an event to celebrate the top basketball talent at the high school level in the state of Colorado. He sourced the media to be involved in the selection process. It turned out the community embraced it, and in the end, it became one of the top honors in the state of Colorado for a high school level student athlete. Now we're here 16 years later, and we're still doing it. What you're gonna to expect tonight is to watch the best talent in the box state here in Colorado. If we do our jobs right, we'll be showcasing these girls and they will have themselves a great time and you'll be able to enjoy some high school level hoops, the elites here in Colorado. I'm Marty Cesario. We are live in Lakewood on the north side of the Denver metropolitan area. It's the show 2016 celebrating the top high school talent in the state. It's coming up next here on Stream It Sports. Good shot of center court there. Shout out to Jack Eberhardt, who's photographing all of these great players at the show 2016. You can see left and right side of your monitor there. The all-stars who will be participating here in this year's showcase of the top players here in our state. Let's look at some of the rosters as we pan to the left side. Thanks, Jeremy. We'll look at Team White, and you see some of those top names there, Taylor Rusk. Jasmine Snipes, Alicia Martinez, part of that Thunder Ridge squad that finished up the regular season in high school with a state championship. Sydney Mech, Carmen Ramey, a very talented player out of Gateway. Oleana Squires, good story. Ellie Pace coming out of the Western Slope from Montrose. And then Leah Davis, big kid who's going to CSU out of Sand Creek High School. And, and it'll be fun to watch up top there. You see number five, Tatum Rembau, who's a very talented Indian from Larimer County. Look at the other squad, and we take a peek at that roster. For Team Blue, that is good look at them. Beautiful graphics here on Stream at Sports. You see Chase Van Sickle. Uh, we have learned that Nicaea is not going to be here. The young lady from Rampart, who will be playing at Nebraska next year, she will not be here. We're experiencing a lot of... Uh, Adverse weather here in spring storms. See Stefik Pranger, 
Kissel, Shook, Bishop, Nick, and Fankel, the coaches for the blue team. Amy Ball out of Evergreen, what a nice season for them. And then Chris Poison from Lakewood High School who will be coaching the team blue for the show 2016. So we're just about getting ready. As you see the ladies warming up, I like the uh, the colorful splash effect. You gotta have your kicks, have a little flair to them. It's part of how you present yourselves. We'll do that. And let's go ahead and take a peek at the starters right now for each of these squads and bring those to you. Uh, we sourced each of the coaching staffs to see who they would like. We're, we're being careful to say in an all-star event that it's, it's the first five out on the floor and you see TK Cleveland's going to start for Regis, Snipes, Martinez, Oleana Squires, along with Ellie Pace. I thought that was a nice gesture to get Ellie Pace to start for Team White. And look at the starters who will begin the game for Team Blue under Coach Ball and Coach Poison, Brenna Chase, Samantha Kissel, Kylie Shook, and McKenna Bishop. I mentioned that Nicaea is not here today, so we will probably have someone else who will sub in. We'll now get ready for the national anthem, and then we'll have player announcements from Matt McGregor. Number 15, sophomore out of Cherry Creek, Sydney Metch. Number 22, senior out of Gateway, Carmen Ramy. Number 34, senior from Sand Creek, Leah Davis. Number 11, Senior out of Regis Jesuit to Kenya Cleveland. Number 12, senior from Thunder Ridge, Jasmine Snipes. Number 14, senior out of Thunder Ridge, Alicia Martinez. Number 24, senior from Sand Creek. Oleana Squires. 
And number 25, senior from Montrose, Ellie Pace. White team is coached by Mr. Asick. That is Matt from Thunder Ridge and Miss Jacqueline Thompson from Monarch. Now for your blue team, number three, junior out of Ralston Valley, Ashley Van Sickle. Number 11, senior out of Fossil Ridge, Sammy Steffick. Number 15, junior out of Cherry Creek, Laura Pranger. Number 25, senior from George Washington High School, Sophie Nick. Number 31, senior from Broomfield, Brenna Fankel. Number one, senior from Broomfield, Brenna Chase. Number five, senior from Rampart, Nicaea Alili. Number 21, senior from Evergreen High School, Samantha Kissel. Number 22, senior from Mesa Ridge, Kylie Shook. And number 23, senior from Lakewood, McKenna Bishop. Coaches for the blue team, Miss Amy Ball from Evergreen and Mr. Chris Poison from Lakewood. All right, excellent presentation of the lineups for each of these squads. Teams white and blue, thank you Matt McGregor who has a lot of history broadcasting pretty much every sport with Thunder Ridge Athletics, so it's nice to have him around and it's appropriate too because you have Coach Matt Asik from Thunder Ridge along with three Grizzlies who are participating in this contest. You can engage with us if you'd like via the Twitter, as you saw my handle pop up there, at Stream at Sports, at The Show Colorado, if you want to react and exchange via the social media platform. Center court, see Ellie Pace is going to jump with Kylie Shook, got a Louisville product, and then a girl in Ellie Pace who will be making plans of the next level down the road. We begin things off with Possession on the left side of your monitor, working around and up top. You see that long shot from the outside and showing off her skills. Sammy Steffick out of Fossil Ridge drains one from deep to get us going. First three points on the board for Team Blue. There's a shot from the outside there deep in the corner and Brenna Chase showing her hustle. Getting a partial block and then pushing up the floor. Eventually the ball back on the left side of your screen. Picked up by Pace. Now Shook going to show her range from the perimeter. And that one falls. And bringing it up for, as I look down and dial in for us visually, getting a good look at Team Blue there. Team Blue getting the basketball, this possession, they're going to work it up on the floor. So let's set you up. Team Blue, well, this is easy. They're wearing the blue jerseys and the blue shorts trimmed in white along the sides. Team White, hey, what do you know? They're wearing white, and they are trimmed in black. As you see that outside release coming from Oleana Squires. Working down the floor, Samantha Kissel can't get it to fall. Kissel, the evergreen product. Able to get the rebound, so loose ball falls for Kissel out of Evergreen High School, and that'll make the staff on the bench smile just a little bit because Amy Ball from Evergreen High, she coached the Cougars deep into the tournament this year in Class 4A here in Colorado. Good defense down in the block. Pace forces the turnover. Back the other way, the give to Shook, and that's just an easy soft touch for Kylie Shook, who is a McDonald's all-American, a 4A player of the year, was selected to play in the games in Chicago early in April. We expect to see another one coming next year. Hello, Miss Onionware, who was unable to participate, though selected 
for the 2016 game here. And there's a pretty shot from the outside, Jasmine Snipes. Snipes on her way to Regis University, not too from, far from here. She'll play Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference ball. Snipes, the co-player of the year in the state and also a state champion with the Thunder Ridge Grizzlies. Fair to say, competitive impact, not much. It's an all-star game, but it's fun to watch these girls play. Most of them, it'll be the last time we see them play competitively at the high school level. Down the floor, streaks Stefik, easy lay-in. So nine on the board for Team Blue. Stefik on her way to South Dakota School of Mines. First team academic all-stater. What are the notes she's proud of? Broke her school record for points in one game with 31. To Kenya Cleveland, who's going to play at American University, just drops one for Team White as we are here in the first quarter, 4.53 on the clock. As you see the miss and eventually the rebound for Shook. Down low, Brenna Chase. Chase, future BYU star, able to get the putback for Team Blue. Miss shot, Stiffick will chase it down. Chase wants it, but Cleveland pressing. How about that? Got the press in the All-Star game. There you go, TK. Outside release, and you can see why Kylie Shook is an All-American and is going to play for Louisville. That kind of size and length still has that outside shot. So Pace able to finally get the ball and just a soft little touch off the bas backboard there and it's a seven point lead for Team Blue. Can't get it to come off the rim and Squires able to get the basketball. Oleana Squires behind the back, gets herself out of trouble and then splash for Oleana Squires who will attend Montana State and be a part of their basketball program. Squires. Does a good job with personal marketing, doing good things. Oleana, back-to-back -back Scorpion Academic Winner of the Year. Runs a basketball camp for special kids. Tutors are friends. It's good stuff. Recent bucket for Team White, Oleana Squires, and we have a pause in the action. And now you'll see the next five coming out onto the floor. And a new set of names to celebrate or if you're watching us from beyond the borders maybe raise the awareness of these outstanding young ladies who are playing basketball here in the 20 or the show 2016 and we're live from lakewood colorado bring it up for white that's tatum rembaugh from loveland high school nice offensive set for white but eventually a turnover and down the floor is laura pranger from cherry creek she gets the score for Blue with the sizable lead developing here. So Pranger scores. The Bruin gets a bucket for Team Blue, and you see that Hufsel defense. It's Pranger working up against Sammy Stefik, or along with, and oh, almost a forced turnover. Back to Taylor Rusk. Skip across, and a missed shot from the outside, trying to get it. Down low, Carmen Ramey, but the ball goes out of bounds. Awarded the possession will be Team Blue. See across the way, one of the officials. Let's give them some love. Alicia Gaudet, Faye Muller, Kristen Sahara officiating the show 2016. Carmen Ramey, the gateway product, across the way. Runs into trouble and a steal. Nice defense, Sophie Nick from George Washington High School. It's fun to see the girls work all phases of their repertoire, including Sophie Nick getting a steal in an all-star game. Rusk, left-hand dribble, she stops, puts it up and misses. Big board down low, Leah Davis gets it a fall. Sand Creek scores. And the future Colorado State Ram gets a bucket for Team White. That pleases Carlin Chavez, our courtside producer, who used to play up there in Ram country. 
One falls for Team Blue, seven point lead as White advances left to right on your screen. Outside shot is short. Who's gonna shag it down? Eventually it's Laura Pranger, the junior from Cherry Creek. And bringing it up is Ashley Van Sickle from Ralston Valley. The leave and then Team Blue works it around. Deep in the corner, looking for the cutter, and then back out. Nice half-court set there for Team Blue, but eventually stepping in front with the steal is Signe Meck, also from Cherry Creek, the lone sophomore in the show 2016. Lost our touch a little bit. These girls playing on RMAC rims here live from Colorado Christian University in Lakewood. Good job, nice feed. Ramey finds Tatum Rembaugh and a score for the Loveland Indian. So White creeping back in within five here in the first quarter. 46 seconds left in the first period here in the women's game at the show 2016. Working the block, double pivot, eventually drawing the whistle. Sophie Nick, no, correct myself, that's a turnover. and That'll be an unforced air for Team Blue. Leah Davis gives it to Rimbaugh. Going to be fronted by Van Sickle. That's a fun one to watch. A couple of juniors. Ramey outside with the left and can't get it off the front of the rim. Strong rebound. Brenna Fankel from Broomfield High. Gives it to Chase. Brenna, also an eagle, gets to the interior and foul. So we'll get a good look. First free throws of the game. And it'll be a familiar face with the bright magenta shoelaces. Brenna Chase. Chase going to Brigham Young University. Academic All-State four years in a row. Front range, front range League Player of the Year. Also the Boulder County Player of the Year. First team All-Stater two years in a row. She's been around the block for a very, very strong program up at Broomfield High School. Last year, won a state championship to send away Mike Kroll. This year, advancing deeply, unable to get it done this year. So Chase able to get one of two. It's a six-point lead, and now an empty possession for Team White. Credit the defense of the blue team. Chase looking for some help, and you can hear the buzzle, and that'll end the first quarter of play. So a good showing to get things, and I think uh, ladies getting in the rhythm. We'll see who comes out on the floor after one six-point lead for Team Blue here on Stream at Sports. Second quarter, the show 2016. Loveland having a good representation from Taylor Renbaugh in the last couple minutes there. You see White getting one off quickly. Had a change in personnel for Team White out there with the basketball. For a moment was Alicia Martinez. Martinez actually a top scorer in the final four for Thunder Ridge as they moved on and collected the state championship trophy. Kylie Shook shooting the three. You might see that in an all-star game. One of the bigs normally in the regular season. Wants to show off a little something extra and we have no problem with that. Back down the other way, right side of your monitor. An outside shot from three and that's off a little bit from Oleana Squires as Brenna Chase will bring it up. She's on the run. Bounce pass, just a short jumper from the baseline. That's a score for Samantha Kissel. 
Kissel out of Evergreen, going to play at Florida Gulf Coast next year, a four-time academic All-Stater. 1,000 career points. All under head coach Amy Ball. Good to see the Cougars program from Upper Jeffco get some things done. You hear Matt McGregor enjoying the shot from Martinez with that corner shot, 4-3, five-point spread, still in favor of Team Blue, who has held the lead throughout the game. 6.30 on the clock, second quarter, jump shot shook, and that won't fall. And there's the board, bringing it strong to Kenya Cleveland. Watch your back. And the give back up top to Squires. They feed pace inside. Shook comes over the top. And then a little friendly help. So a turnover for Team White. And we'll see Blue bring it up. Familiar look for so many years. It'll be Chase playing the point across the timeline. And now Blue will work it around. The missed shot in a good position defensively on the rebound, Martinez, and she gets the basketball for Team White. Squires will take it up. One on one, Squires against Chase, and the give to Pace. Nice soft left and a score for Ellie Pace. Ellie Pace out of Montrose out there on the Western Slope, gonna go to Portland State, scores the bucket and brings Team White within three and now some good solid defense. But then better hustle underneath Sophie Nick. Nick graduating this year from George. Going to go to Vassar College in New York. Pretty impressive resume for Sophie Nick. Vice President of the Spanish Honor Society. National History Competition. Sophie Nick, I tweeted this because I was impressed. Said it pops off the page for personal marketing. Seventh in the entire country in the National History Competition. And her ACT is 34. Like to see the student athletes who can bring a little game both on and off the court. Sophie Nick Fitz. Meanwhile, we watch the free throws from Jasmine Snipes, the future region. So Team White got to within three, gave up a bucket from Sophie Nick. Now back to within three. And an empty possession for Team Blue until the whistle's blown, and we'll get a couple more free throws from Brenna Chase. Chase able to land that one. One of the accolades that I liked, and I have to ask about it, is Brenna Chase claims the Super Kid Award in 2016, and. I'm just odd enough to be interested in what that is. <laughs> and I, I'm sure it's a, a great thing. I looked a little bit. That's a, an award you receive in Broomfield, city and county. So that's kind of cool to add on to her resume as she heads up to Utah to play for BYU. More mass substitutions for Team Blue this time. See across the way. Quick look, I see Ashley Van Sickle, a junior from Ralston Valley, is back out. And she'll play along with Martinez. So there's Van Sickle up top against Martinez. Martinez uses the pick for a moment, and then good defense coming up, McKenna Bishop. It's a good night for McKenna Bishop, being in her hometown, playing in the show. Bishop pushes it up, the give to the corner. Missed shot, thought for a moment that Pranger was going to bring it down, but then it's popped out of bounds. So now Coach Matt Asik and Jacqueline Toman want to put in some new play? players. What? See if we get a good look at her. Interesting note with Jacqueline Toman when we get the wide shot. Jacqueline Toman, who is coaching for Team Wide. Selected three times to the show, participated in two, and is now coaching in the show. Jacqueline Toman, out of Highlands Ranch High School, played for Boston College University. 
A bucket on the board for Team White, back to within three. It's the closest they've been in a while. 3.53 on the clock, second quarter. Nice take. McKenna Bishop, a Lakewood Tiger. That three off from Russ, chasing it down. Was Team White for a moment, but coming out with it, Laura Pranger, who yields to Ashley Van Sickle, working the dribble. Thought I'd like that matchup. Van Sickle against Rembau now, a couple of juniors. Then eventually the leave backwards to Sydney Mack. Rebound, Brenna Frankel. Frankel's fun to watch. Three sport athlete. Colorado golf qualifier, made it to state as a golfer. Also an all conference volleyball player and an all conference basketball player. So you just don't mess with Fankel when you're talking about what you can do. I got nothing. Second quarter, exactly three minutes on the clock here in Lakewood on the campus of CCU. Got a five point lead for Team Blue. White puts it up, that's off from Russ, the future Wyoming Cowboy. Blue pushing it up, Bishop thought about it. She's gonna look for a cutter to the inside and there's a lot of traffic, good defense down low. Notably Leah Davis who's banging away with Fankel, left side of your screen there in the post. Davis disrupts a shot and that goes off. Officials gonna award the basketball to Team Blue who will maintain possession. Big smiles, Bishop sits. Shook comes back out onto the floor. And there's a good personnel to have inbounding for you is Kylie Shook who wants it back. Working the inside outside game, there's Fankel. Pretty piece of work, eventually finished off with the left. And a score for Team Blue, back up by seven. With the dribble up top, Sydney Mack. See, good thing, she's just a sophomore for Cherry Creek. Oh, nice to the inside, so Davis, the CSU Ram, can score. 145 in the second. And a five point lead for Team Blue with the basketball. Far side Mech, checked by Rambo, back to the corner. And a shot from deep. Count that one for Sammy Stefik. Stefik, also one of those female student athletes who gets it done everywhere. First team all state as an academic All-Stater. Miscommunication, we'll see some of that. These ladies don't necessarily play together at the high school level. Well aware where we are in basketball where pretty much everybody knows each other from club ball. But you'll have a couple of unforced errors. Trying to drive with the left shoulder. Rembo gets called for it. A rare whistle, blown, and an offensive foul. So you can kind of hear Matt McGregor in the background, first team foul. We won't get many of those. Matter of fact, we gave the stink eye to the officials that, hey, it's an all-star game. But, you, know, you got it? You got it? <laughs> Want to maintain our pace. Sammy steffix has got some points on the board, scores another for Team Blue. It's a 10-point spread for the ladies wearing the blue, and then a block by Fankel back the other way. Here comes Ashley Van Sickle out of RV High. Big smile from Shook, got caught. Great defense, Leah Davis. That'll probably please Ryan Williams up north. See some of that hustle to get in position to force a turnover. 20 seconds and counting remaining here in this first half in Lakewood at the show 2016. Nice D, Laura Pranger, ball out of bounds. 
At halftime, we'll be visited by Neil Devlin from the Denver Post for a Yo! segment where he'll share the importance of having this event and help us celebrate the ladies out on the floor. 11 seconds left. The drive from Ramey. She tries to step back and can't get it up in the air in time before the whistle. And we'll have a final possession with just eight seconds left and a brief timeout. So Coach Ball across the way. She's the lady in the khaki pants with the blonde hair. Shout out to Michael Ball, by the way, who's an assistant with Derek Clark at Metro State University. Amy says she married into the Ball family. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, I don't know. Amy's an all-century team selection for the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Amy's got herself an, a resume coming out of Fort Lewis College, head coach for the Evergreen Cougars now, and that is Amy Ball in a crouched position with Chris Poison up top, looking over what play they're going to draw up for this final 7.6 seconds for Team Blue with a 10-point lead. I'm hoping it's something fancy, something fun. So Team White coming back into your picture. Right now, uh, Phil Mildren, executive producer, and Alex Wines, who are running the technical operations, calling for the dunk from Kylie Shook. Maybe the oop to Shook for the dunk to finish. Bring in Neil Devlin. How about that? Down the way, gets to Van Sickle, pushes it up the floor. Five seconds, 4-3, and it's Stefik from the outside. That's off, and a rebound by Davis, and that's how we'll finish up the first two quarters of play. So a 10-point lead for Team Blue. Sammy Stefik having herself a nice first 16 minutes, and we'll go ahead and take a break, and we'll have a visit from Neil Devlin from the Denver Post in a few moments here on Stream at Sports. Overlooking half court, I love the colors across the top. You see the show banner and then all the kids. That's actually not real students. <laughs> That's just a- uh, Oh, they're some, just painted on? Yeah, just painted on across the way, but we joke with Coach Lubbers who yeah. hits the men's basketball program. It gives a good look. Yeah. It's the show 2016 halftime here, 10 point lead for Team Blue. We are at halftime of the women's game. With us is Neil Devlin from the Denver Post. 30 plus years of covering these student athletes here in the state of Colorado. So Date me, so well. it's 36, man. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't even think of it that way. I, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to bring you up and applaud you, but it does uh, apply numbers to you. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> hey, Neil, the show. What is it, and why is it important for us to have it here in the state? Well, it's a nice gig for the kids, for, from a basketball standpoint. I mean, you know, we're in transition this year, obviously. Right. Right. But for as long as we had it, what, like 12 years, 11 years, whatever it was, um, for them to get the uh, ability to play at the Pepsi Center 
is a big deal for a kid. And then, you know, over the years they had it, you know, like after a Nuggets game, before a Nuggets game, well before a Nuggets game, you know, stuff like that. But um, for them to get a chance to go play at the Pepsi Center where the pros play, the largest arena in the region, period, end of story. If I was a kid, yeah, I'd be into it. Is that what's most important is, is the selection of it and why we have to keep it here in the state? Well, you know, um, it's an off-season gig, which I think is cool. So you keep the game relevant. And basketball is a game that, you know, it doesn't take much to, to turn an all-star game. So why not have it? You know what I mean? I mean, because, right. like, look, high school sports, as you know, are really competing with club and, you know, academies and all that crap and everything like that. So, I mean, whatever you can get generated in addition to regular high school sports, because we don't play near enough events here, I'm all for it. You've been on the panel, the, the selection committee. Part yeah. of this that I'm glad they kept yeah. is, is for credibility. They kept the media as the selection panel. I, you know, I, I always argue, I do my thing, but you guys who are on the beat, nobody's seen them as much as all you guys in the various publications. You know, it's the best way to do it. I, I think it is. It's, it's the best way to do it because you have to have a situation in which you get as much intelligent input as possible. It's the best way of doing things. It's like when we do all state or all Colorado, something like that. You know, you get your hands on as much information as you possibly can, then it's up to you to sift through it. So if you get segments or offerings from various places all over Colorado, that's the way to go. And then just as a regular fan, you know, you saw two quarters already, and then yeah. you, you know all the girls. Uh, yeah. what, what, what's looking good to you? What makes it fun to come here and, and, and watch these well, girls? Well, for one thing, um, I was impressed. The one all-star game I saw earlier, uh, uh, the new one uh, for Aurora. Mm -hmm. You know what was cool about that was it didn't talk, turn into a show-off fest, right. which basketball is prone to do. You know what I mean? Here, uh, the girls don't have it in them to be a bunch of show-offs, uh -huh. which is cool. So they play, and they play together as hard as they can, and that's all you can ask for. I'll be interested to see how the boys going to adhere to what happened in Aurora because Aurora deserves its own all-star game because, I mean, Aurora owns it right now. Yeah. Make no mistake, Aurora owns big school basketball and deeply – but, I mean, uh, when they played at Aurora Central, it was cool, man. They didn't – it wasn't all about, you know, me showing off and doing this. They actually played together, and they blended the talents together, which I think uh, the people who came out to watch it thought that was the coolest thing. Yeah, and that's part of what this is, too, is these kids – you know how it is these days with, with club and, and all the tournaments and traveling. They all know each other yeah. anymore, you oh, know, yeah. it, which actually affects rivals. Oh, yeah. But it's fun for them one more moment for them to play together, you know, especially when you consider a lot of these uh, these folks are seniors, right? They're, they're That's, out the well, door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look, I mean, you, 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 when you're asked to speak to the kids, one of the things you're compelled to tell them is the following. Look, adulthood is going nowhere. It's waiting around the corner. <laughs> right. We're doing the finger thing and saying, hey, come here. We're waiting for you. Come on over and join us. Don't, you know, stay a kid as long as you can. Look, at, in, in 36 years of this business, I'm still some big kid. It's the way to go. You know? Yeah, I see you when you tweet some of those things out when you share personal, and I always uh, I nod my head in the background. As like, <laughs> they, they keep us young, right? Absolutely. They, yeah, they do. I, I like it. Why do you still do that? Because I like it. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, in the higher levels, uh, I just ran into it uh, last week, man. I went up uh, to Broomfield, Porter Milner, great Broomfield soccer player and young man, by the way, won uh, Sports Illustrated's uh, Athlete of the Month. And they had a Rapids guy up there to present the award to him. And I tried to speak to the Rapids guy about the award. Was he knew about it? And the kid, does he follow the local game? Blah, 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 that stuff. Uh, the Rapids PR lady just, oh, no media interviews. I said, look, I'm just trying to get some no media interviews. And I went, wow. And then when he spoke about the kid, he stumbled over a couple of sentences. I mean, it had a, you know, there was like a phony aspect to it. <laughs> and I contacted Sports Illustrated about it. I says, look. You guys want to do something like this? At least act like you know what's happening here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And I've been reading that magazine since 1969. You know. How about the uh, the venue here? Because you mentioned it. Yeah. You know, we've had a change. It's no longer the site of a professional basketball franchise. We're on the floor and inside the event center of an RMAC team right here in Lakewood. What's your feeling now that you've been here for an hour or so? Well, it's new, you know, um, and uh, it was put together late and everything like that. I think it all turned out very well. I mean, I'm okay with this thing bouncing around to various colleges and stuff like that. I mean, why not? Right. You know? Well, it would be a good idea to source Neil Devlin for reaction because, hey, let's be honest, I've been thinking this all week. We're all sitting here arms folded waiting to see what this was going to be, right. and now we're experiencing it. Yeah, and, I've, and so far so good. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was uh, 
and it had to be. It's not Jerry's fault or something, man. Right. But uh, the kids had to uh, pay a fee to play. Um, you know, previous years, you know, the Nuggets or whoever, Gold Crown. I mean, there's another thing we could do. We uh, maybe involve Bill Hanslick and Gold Crown. Yep. Why not? Yeah, all kinds of ideas. It's a, hey, One of the coaches said to me it's a new beginning, so I think it's all open. And yeah. I think uh, it's good for all of us to source each other and see if we can come up with something good for those kids out right. on the floor. Absolutely. Right? All right. Neil Devlin from the Denver Post. Appreciate having you for halftime. My pleasure. We're going to keep him around for a while, make him work a little bit, right? Yeah. Not that he doesn't have 8,000 things to do. Nah. <laughs> right? Nah. And all i got to do is yak, which is I'm going to do in, in just a few moments here. About 90 seconds away from starting up the second half here, the show 2016 on Stream at Sports. We return to Lakewood, Colorado. We are live from the CCU Event Center, the campus of Colorado Christian University, the show 2016. It's the women's basketball event. You see Team Blue has a 10-point lead right there on that very beautiful score bug at the bottom of your screen, thanks to Phil and Alex. Also Jeremy upstairs and Carlin Chavez, who's my wing for my squad. <laughs> Down here at courtside, just getting underway. We flip sides, so white advancing right to left on your monitor as we are broadcasting on digital television. It's just TV, just got to embrace. Could be some different looking screens. That's all it is. Same thing. And you can carry it around, which is, you know, something that would be difficult in 1975. So a mispossession for Team White quickly transitioning up the floor left to right. Team Blue, who will keep the ball, and McKenna Bishop will shoot it up top for Sammy Stefik, and a little too short. To Kenya Cleveland, gonna push it. Pardon me, that's Jasmine Snipes. And good defense in transition, forces the turnover. Kickball, we don't call that. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I thought we were gonna leave that one alone. It's not a foul, again, we were I guess suggesting, urging the referees to remind themselves it's an all-star game. We don't need the whistles. But technically that's not a foul. That's just another unforced error there. As you see, Brenna Chase tried to kiss one off the glass. Radical angle doesn't work out for her. McKenna Bishop, go ahead, hoist one. Yeah, we want to see Bishop, which would be a good story for the Lakewood Tiger playing in her hometown. If we get a Good tight look, which you will eventually, which would be part of why it could be a special moment. As you see Martinez splash one with the short jumper on the run. But when you get the good looks, you'll see the numerals across the sternum for all of the players, but you'll also see a 33 up on the left side. And Jeremy's going to get us a look. There is an extra 33 that is up in the left-hand corner that is to represent the late Mackenzie Forrest, who is a teammate of that girl, McKenna Bishop. Mackenzie, a young lady who was going to play Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference basketball on a scholarship, passed away in April. McKenna Bishop representing, I think more than just herself and her squad, but also Mackenzie Forrest and the entire Lakewood basketball community. And we should note, add to the facts, that Chris Poison, who very brave man, is also here, has lost his father, who my understanding was completely engaged with all kids in Lakewood basketball. So it's a special moment here in the hometown of McKenna Bishop. 
Wanted to make sure we paid respect to that story. And maybe a little extra rooting for McKenna on this night. Meanwhile, Team White gets one down. It's a six-point spread creeping back into it. Uh, the ladies in the white jerseys, they have never held the lead. It's been Team Blue with the advantage throughout the contest. 545, third quarter here in the show, 2016. Marty Cesario, along with Phil Mildred, Alex Wines. Upstairs, Jeremy Davies and Carlin Chavez next to me. And you'll hear Matt McGregor's voice throughout the broadcast because he's got the booming voice on the PA. How about that, a score? Team White, Jasmine Snipes who will play at Regis, that's fitting because we had mentioned Bishop. And a score for Team Blue. And a seven point lead for the ladies in blue as Chuck picks up the loose ball. Here comes Brenna Chase up against Rimbaud. Nice eyeballs and just a little off that time. Rebound Rimbaud and the Loveland Junior Wants it to the near side here, trying to find Martinez. Taylor Rusk on the drive. Brenna Chase, she's going to dunk it. She's on her own. Or maybe the lay-in. You know why? Because she's a team player. It's not about her. Doesn't want to draw attention to herself. We could have hit the toggle button. X, O, 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 Brenna dunk. Yeah. So Brenna Chase doing what we've seen Brenna Chase do for many years with the steal all the way up the court. Recent bucket, missed shot underneath, and here comes Chase once again. The super kid. Missed shot, rebound. Sydney Meck pushing up the floor. Meck's intriguing because she's a sophomore, and you can see some skills and length to her. Got her pocket pick that time. I believe that was Sammy Stefik who poked it away. Bringing it up with Sam, Samantha Kissel and then a whistle blown. Now some more subs. Everybody in, everybody out. See Coach Ball across the way, giving some low fives. As we pan left to right, you can see Matt Asik on the right side of the Team White bench and Jacqueline Toman in the boots next to him. So fresh personnel out there for each of the squads. Save Brenna Chase, who just gave it to Van Sickle. And Ralston Valley's Ashley Van Sickle with the three ball for Team Blue. And now a 12-point lead at the 3.33 mark here in the third quarter of the show, 2016. Trying to match it. Carmen Ramey. Yep. Ramey, how about this for her resume? Student attorney for Teen Court. She's been through aviation training through Aurora Public Schools. Ramey played for the Gateway Olympians, started her career as a freshman with Denver School of Science and Technology Stapleton campus and helped them go to the Final Four. She's been a superstar in the EMAC for Gateway, two-time player of the year. So Ramey scores for Team White. Now she's going to chase the basketball. Doesn't have a nice bounce pass across the way. No finish there for Team Blue. Getting it is Sydney Meck for a moment, and it results in a score for Brenna Fankel. Fankel, the three-sport stud out of Broomfield High School. Leads back to 11 for Team Blue, 227, third quarter of the show. Rebound put back Leah Davis. Scorpions rock. And Davis scores for Team White. Back to a single digit deficit for White defending against the Blue. Fankel to Chase. Little short. Trying to chase it down. Pranger and can't get to it. Like the work of Pranger, she's a junior. She's done a lot of all the peripheral things. Chasing balls down, setting screens. Oleana Squires trying to work through. Can't get it to fall. Down the floor. And eventually, it'll be a score for the Patriot from G-Dub. 
Sophie Nick scores. Nick with the ACT of 34 puts the two on the board for Team Blue. Working up high, Davis can't get it to fall. Van Sickle, nice eyes down the floor, better defense. Getting to it, thought Ramey was gonna have a steal, but it doesn't happen. And it's a, another bucket for Team Blue. 13 point lead here at the CCU Event Center. 106 and counting in the third. Sydney Mech playing defense. Shot no good off the hand of TK Cleveland. Working the dribble chase. Nice follow defensively. Ramey getting up top. Are there going to be free throws? No. So it's a clean block shot by our statistician. Olivia hooking us up with the stats. <laughs> and now we're settling our pace down just a little bit. Van Sickle thinks about it. Now respecting the quickness of Ramey, so to the block inside, and that's fun to watch. Do battle, ladies. Nick against Davis. Ball out of bounds. Team Blue's going to keep it. 30 seconds left in the third. Chase for the three. And that's good. So Brenna Chase, a three-pointer, and now the lead is widening for Team Blue under head coach Matt Asik and Jacqueline Toman. To the inside, Cleveland tries to get work done. That's no good, and Blue is streaking down the floor. Van Sickle and Mech, or pardon me, it was... Van Sickle along with Laura Pranger. I was kind of looking for Pranger to get that bucket there. Two seconds left, one and buzzer. And you see a 16 point spread in favor of Team Blue will take the break. After three, Team Blue looking good. They've got a big advantage here at the show 2016. Chris Poison from Lakewood High turning around, getting a read on what the officials want. Amy Ball, the head coach for Team Blue, designing some all-star plays for her squad. Chris Poison out of Lakewood, Amy Ball from Evergreen. So Jeffco Power in the hizzle for Team Blue. And we're back underway. Right now Team Blue with a 16-point lead just getting underway with Van Sickle up top working the point. Like to see the little subtle adjustments on who coaches want to have fun in terms of, uh, I guess, assignments. Maybe Van Sickle's going to run the point for Team Blue the rest of the way. Right now it's Taylor Russ from Thunder Ridge crossover and then the give back. And that's off the shot attempt from Sydney Mech out of Cherry Creek. Again, Mech, the only sophomore out here. Bishop to the inside, can't get it to fall. And that's excellent defense from Sydney Mech. The leave and the three, the attempt no good. Excellent work there, yeah, I wanted to see the payoff there. Jasmine Snipe with the follow rebound and then just a little dish, no look, but unable to get it to fall. Outside shot from Blue, that's no good. And here comes Taylor Rusk for Team White, down 16 at the 6.58 mark in the fourth quarter. At the end of this game, just for the sake of putting girls on TV, we're going to grab a couple of players, one from each of these squads. Ringo. 
right on cue, Tatum Rembaugh, the junior, which said, I'd like to be a part of that if you can put me in the conversation. Very talented Loveland Indian representing Larimer County up north. Matching that is Sammy Stefik. Those two aware of each other. Stefik out of the south side of the Fort Collins area. So Stefik, who will be going to the South Dakota School of Mines, gets a three to put Blue back up by sizable margin you see there. Again, no competitive impact. It, you know, it's just a little bit of bragging rights. It's mostly about fun and putting young ladies on television. And as Neil Devlin and I, in case you've been around with us, talk during halftime, I mean, one of the biggest components of the show is just the selection alone and all these girls being here. It's huge. Wonder what it's like for a sophomore. That's Sydney Mack from Cherry Creek. Nailing both from the free throw line. 6-17, fourth quarter. Here comes Ashley Van Sickle. What a year she's had for an RV program that went deep into the playoffs in Class 5A. People want that. Those aren't all Lakewood people over there. McKenna Bishop with the three for the Tigers. Q Katie Perry, she coming? Encore performance. One of the fun things with the Lakewood High School community. Soliciting Katy Perry last year and they got her to come and perform at their high school. That's awesome. A lot of good things happening for Lakewood. I will note that considering what the recent story has been in the month of April. Baseline shot no good for Blue. Up the floor with Snipes. Gives it back to Martinez. Rusk has it now near side. Taylor Rusk. Oh, that is not a friendly rim. Good rebound by Rembo to keep it alive, and Bishop comes up with it and looks for a friend. Mechanic has got the skills herself. Kylie shook from the outside, and that's a little off. Strong board snipes. You go get that, girl. And it's going to be a jump ball call, huh? Possession arrow, which I've yet to look at throughout the evening. <laughs> it will award the basketball to Miss Martinez with it right now. And Team White down pretty big margin. 450 in the fourth. Shook tries to find somebody, and it goes out of bounds. Just a little miscommunication. Slams into the Badger Sports sign. Good story, Badger Sports helping to support the broadcast here. Last minute decision by people who have more money than I'll ever have. Donating a large portion of the apparel to the kids, which is kind of awesome. They not only get the jerseys, but there's the, see if I use the terminology right, the heathered tees. They all got shooter shirts. Pretty good luck. Kids like the swag, right? And it's nice for them to walk out with something that they can use as they ball in their future. Some more substitutions. I see Brent Fankel back out there, also stepping out for Team Blue, Laura Pranger. As we see some more free throws from the talented Miss Rembo, Tatum Rembo. We're going to hear a lot from her next year. Thought for a moment we're going to have a timeout. 439, fourth quarter. Big smile from Kylie Shook and an exchange from Kristen, the referee on the opposite side. I like it. It's an all-female officiating crew, which is kind of cool. So the ladies are getting it done out here, and it's their show, which is awesome. Me being a, a father in a house of she, I'm good with that. Someday I hope to do some imprinting and bring my little girls to come see what big girls do in terms of being awesome. Ooh, <laughs> nice wraparound from TK Cleveland. Pace couldn't get it up in the air because of good defense by Team Blue. And then we get the whistle blown. Fourth quarter, 4.05 mark. Fans kind of looking for the finish. Splash factor. Make some highlights so Alex and Phil have to do some post-production. 
Outside shot, no good. Good box out by Takenya Cleveland. And the ball goes out of bounds. So under four to play as Oleana Squires is going to work off the dribble. Squires to her teammate in the regular season, Leah Davis, unable to finish. Cleveland can't get it off. Down the floor is Shook. Gets the ball again and able to get one down. So the future Louisville Cardinal puts one on the board. The McDonald All-American kind of get the sense. She wants to yield to some of the other players out there. Kylie Shook, I, I've yet to mention, out of Mesa Ridge High School in the Monument area. I'm going to give them some love. Because part of the representation is not just about the girls, but also the programs that they hail from. Exactly three minutes left, fourth quarter. Brenna Chase is coming up the floor. And now she'll be at the free throw line once again. So Chase leads the night for free throw attempts. I think that's fair to say. At 2.53. I'm glancing across the way off camera at the staffs and each of the pairs of coaches with big smiles on their faces as Brenna Chase sinks that one. You see the score on the Stream at Sports score bug with the BioCat Sports Network emblem, BioCat Sports Network, funding pretty much most of this event. Squires, yes! So Oleana Squires able to land one. Oleana Squires scored 43 points in a Final Four game in March, which tied the state record in a playoff game. Girl can put it in. Squires going to go to Montana State. And now working defense, trying to take the ball. Squires can't get it to fall. Like the work there of Sophie Nick, but Team Blue unable to get the bucket with a pretty good lead here. And a foul called, a couple of groans across the way. It's a good look. Neil Devlin from the Denver Post who visited at halftime. We talked about how, yeah, hey, the reality is it's no longer at the NBA's house. Had to rally, to put this together. I think it was important to have this event in whatever form, and that's what we're doing here. One of the nice things, my opinion is, is you're on a college campus. I think that's a good fit for these girls and where they're going. And also, it's a little bit of a tighter venue to where you're not dwarfed by a large arena. Just picking out the positives, which I will continue to do. You can sue me or troll me all you want. 134 left, battling down low. Cleveland, Davis, Fankel, and Brenna Fankel will come out with it. Brenna Fankel, involved with the Teen Challenges program, was the CU Junior Student of the Year. And I mentioned earlier, three, port, three sports stud, basketball, the volleyball, and also a state qualifier in golf. So that'll do. And hits two. 133, fourth quarter, and we have to figure out who we're going to talk to. I don't think we lean towards calling anybody most outstanding player unless something jumped off the screen to us. I've got a former Division I basketball player out of the Mountain West who's helping me, and we'll have to see. Shook, short jumper off the dribble. Squire's going to chase it for Team White. 105 left in the fourth. The show 2016 here in Lakewood. Chase down the floor. Sophie Nick, a little sweet kiss off the glass. That's pretty. Sophie Nick with the bucket for George. I think Sophie's a candidate. We've liked her. Kind of lean towards a senior. Most everybody here is a senior. The selection process 
kind of yields to rewarding the seniors. Down the floor, there's another one. We've enjoyed her play. Laura Pranger out of Cherry Creek High School. So the Bruin gets it done. Nice feed down the floor, 20 seconds left. We're about to finish up the women's basketball game here for the show 2016 Squires. No. And 10 seconds left and counting. And another shot from Nick. Just a little bit off, that was appropriate. So there we are, you see the final score and a good performance on the part of Team Blue. Applause for everybody in moments. We'll talk to a couple players just to get a reaction of what the experience is like. We'll be back in moments after Blue wins the show 2016. We return to Stream at Sports, the show 2016, Team Blue with the victory. But again, it's all about these ladies, uh, their selection and being here and just having a nice experience. And in the case of both the girls that we're going to talk to, it's really their final time performing as high school athletes because they're moving on next level, yo. <laughs> right. We'll start with Team White, Alicia Martinez from Thunder Ridge High School. I just want to know your experience of being selected and then performing in this. What's it like for you? Um, it's always great to be selected. It's an honor to be here. I mean, there's so many great girls around school, uh, around Colorado, and to be selected is just an honor. What would you tell other girls next year when they call you up in your college dorm and say, I I'm in, what's that like? Sorry, could you repeat the, repeat the question? Well, meaning, like, you know, say some of the younger girls in the Thunder Ridge program, if one of them gets in the show and they want to know what it's like, what they should expect, what will you tell them? Oh, just play your game, relax. It's always fun. I mean, we got beat by 30, but I still had a blast here, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's not about the score. Uh, your future plans. Share with us what, what you're going to be doing. Um, I'm headed to Black Hill State in Spearfish, South Dakota, playing the RMAC, so I'll be playing CCU and all the Colorado teams here, you know? There you go. I thought that was a good fit, too. Yeah. She's an RMAC lady. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. All right, there you go. Alicia Martinez. Again, she's going to play for the Yellow Jackets of Black Hill State for Team White. And now we have Brenna Chase on her way to BYU, so she'll be a Mountain West ball player. You've done a couple of these, right? Yeah. Yeah, how many? Is it two? I think two. Two, right. And then a lot of girls out of your program have been a part of this. Why is it important to, to be a part of this? Why is it, like, you know, a great accolade and accomplishment? It's, it's awesome. I mean, it's just an honor. It's so fun to be a part of these. You make it great. Right. What makes it fun? Um, just like playing with all the other girls and they're all so good and it's so fun to make new friends and just play with new people and it's fun to play the game. 
why is it a, a nice showing for f you as a female student athlete to have an accomplishment like this? Um, it's just it's just great. Like it's it's an honor. There's so many great players in Colorado, and just to be a part of this is such an honor. Gotcha. Mike Kroll in the house. Was he around? Um, I'm not sure. Not, not sure. I didn't see him. Gotcha. <laughs> Referring to Coach Mike Kroll, all he did was collect state championships. All right. <laughs> Hey, congratulations. Appreciate it. So, Brenda Chase, Alicia Martinez, MVPs here in the show 2016. Really, all the girls, of course, are outstanding players. We just use MVP loosely because we like to put kids on television. Hey, we want to thank Phil Mildred, our executive producer, for Alex, Jeremy, Carlin Chavez, my courtside producer, Matt McGregor on the PA. You heard him throughout the broadcast. And, of course, we have to thank Badger Sports and BioCat Sports Network for supporting this event and keeping the show alive so it could go on. Again, Team Blue has the win. Good night from Lakewood, Colorado. That concludes our broadcast of the show, Girls Basketball All-Star Game. The show is a presentation of BioCat Sports Network. Producers of showcase events and academic elite camps for student athletes. And sponsored by Badger Sport, your go to manufacturer of high performance sports apparel. This has been a Stream It Sports production.